Hello again, and welcome back to our um, second lecture. This is uh, the uh, continuation of our uh, drilling operation. So this is a part two. So in the previous lecture, we have learned about different components of the, uh, of the drilling equipment. So we have learned about the hoisting system, the rotary system, um, and now uh, we'll actually learn about the most important and the critical one is the mud circulation as well as um, we'll learn about the power trains also. Okay, so uh, let's continue. Now, uh, this um, example picture, like I mean how we actually do the drilling and why we actually do the drilling, right? So uh, this is called actually the dry hole. If we, if we predict that there would be um, oil and gas uh, in here because the geology actually looks like in this way but if we just uh, drill the hole and couldn't find anything so that's we know as the dry hole okay but if we drill it and get the oil so we're lucky and we call it oil well now these are actually known as a uh, type of um, 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 reservoir like our oil are known as wildcat oil that means like hydromes okay so only one in ten wildcat wells is a discovery and what is discovery that means profitably we can extract or like produce oil and gas from here okay so just uh, um, recurring like the previous uh, knowledge now uh, let's um, continue with our drilling operation. So this is a picture that's actually images shows like the onshore and how the offshore of the of the drilling actually works. So uh, if we actually do the in offshore operation, so the semi-submersible um, offshore platform we actually use for the drilling. So the principle is same. Just the difference is uh, the onshore we use the tricks or the masts um, in in onshore and in case of offshore we use a large uh, semi-submersible structure or could be a drill ship or could be attached with the ground if the uh, if the water level is low and then we do the same principle okay so the pr basic principle is actually actually same so mud circulation or the circulation system let's uh, talk about the circulation system at first okay so um, I'm actually going a little bit detail on this uh, circulation system so I'm just uh, copying it and uh, and let's uh, uh, explain this a little bit in different way well seems like the <clears throat> quality is not very good but anyways uh, the most important thing is like you understand what is actually here okay so um, at this uh, mud circulation system so first thing actually happened like uh, let's explain from here okay so here is the Here is the mud is actually coming through. So there is the rotor in here. Okay, so the drill bit is in here. So from the drill bit, the mud actually goes. And then the drill bit start doing the operation. We have learned at the previous lecture, okay, how the drill bit works. So uh, for instance, this is the drill bit. Okay, and the mud is actually going out from here and this is the hole okay so the drill hole now uh, for instance in this hole uh, we have the rocks okay so these rocks I mean this is the cutting rocks so drill this uh, drill bit actually do the drilling and we have these rocks and these rocks uh, these small piece of rocks they actually 
then will be transferred so since it's a very high velocity like this high speed jet then this along with these rocks it will go here on the top okay then then what we do with this this mixture okay this this is the mud or like the drill fluid okay and this is the mixture of uh, cuts and drilling fluid or it is known as mud okay now when we do this step okay after that this we actually this mud and uh, these uh, rocks these actually go up okay up to the surface and then we actually um, collect it we actually collect it through a mud return line okay and it goes to a shale shaker so the shale shaker is uh, is a kind of like i mean sieving okay and this uh, separator sieving separator that separates these uh, cuts like these rock cuts small rock particles and these muds actually go to the uh, reservoir we called it mud pit or reservoir pit okay this is called mud pit or the reserve pit. So, as I said, this mud, these are not like, I mean, I mean, uh, just like the, like the uh, mud. This is, this is a kind of like a chemical, okay? This is a special type of chemical we actually use. So, these muds actually, um, uh, we reserve in here. And then what we do, we actually recycle. Okay, so we actually recycle the the uh, muds, all right? So uh, we'll actually learn about these muds, like I mean, what is the composition of the muds? What is that actually? So um, how it actually works? So, anyways, so there's some I mean pumps, and from these pumps we actually put this mud back again in here, okay? And there's a sand trap, so we actually um, uh, use um, um, a different, I mean, like, I mean, uh, degas or sometimes, or desilter, for instance, if the mud actually contain uh, not only rocks, if it contain like the sands, okay, so we can use desilter silts are the sands right so we can use desilters and for instance if the gas actually dissolved in this mud too so we can actually uh, remove the gas so we also call this degasser okay so we do all these treatments in this unit okay so we do all these uh, treatments by uh, doing like the uh, using the chemicals and everything so these are like the chemical task and after all this processing this is a suction line of the mud that means the mud is being now recycling now and this is called mud pump okay so this is a special type of pump so uh, mostly we actually use the rotating pump in here uh, but in the very high pressure so that it can actually give the high pressure okay and then it goes to the stamp pipe Again, and the rotary hose and put on the top of the swivel you remember the swivel okay so the top portion of the swivel is fixed with the hoisting system and the bottom part connect with the Kelly you remember so it goes underneath and from there it goes directly to the borehole okay so this is how the mud cycle actually works and this is a very very important uh, diagram actually we have okay so how the uh, drilling fluid 
or the mud actually circulate okay the, this is the mud circulating system now uh, if we need more muds okay so during on the process we can actually lost some muds if we cannot use that or like uh, if, if there is a process loss so to compensate that we can actually stack those muds and then uh, we can actually put the bulb I mean mud bins okay so from there we put it at the um, uh, mud pit again and then it starts recycling back okay just like this so this is the mud circle now um, let's go back to our uh, lecture slide so this is how the mud circulating system actually works okay so pumps drilling the fluids down to the hole through the series of the pipe and the fluid flows of the bit and then come back to the surface okay uh, uh, so these are the mud pumps this is uh, again like the mud circulating system so let's uh, let's uh, go through that again okay let's see the process again so uh, let's start from here out through the drill bit it go to the borehole and then what what is borehole borehole is the hole we are actually digging the drilling hole okay so mud pick up the cuttings the rock cuttings it takes back these all these rock cuttings through analysis then it leaves the wall through mud return line or the flow line it go to the shakers okay it go to the uh, go back to the mud pits okay then we do actually the processing sometimes if uh, there is a silt or gas we do the desilting or degassing okay then it goes to the uh, mud pit again and then through the pump we put it to the standpipe that means through the you remember through the swivel okay the standpipe and then through the kelly it goes the rotating hose okay and remember this is highly pressurized now why we use the pumps and then the oh sorry uh, the rotating hose then it goes to the swivel down to the kelly and then it out from the drill bit and it do the same process again and again okay so this is the mud circulating system okay so here uh, you can actually compare Okay, so it goes to the standpipe, rotating hose, go to the swivel, through the kelly, and then it do its job at the borehole. It pick up the rock cuttings and everything, and then go back to the pump, and then we recycle it again by uh, do some chemical treatments and stuff, and then we um, go to the mud pump, and this is how it continues. Okay, this is the uh, circulating system. Now, at our mud circulation system, we have uh, several um, components like the shell shakers, like the cuttings of the shakers, okay, to separate the rock cuttings. So, if we have the tiny particles, it's removed by the desander or desilter, okay. If we have the gas, as I said, we actually remove it through the degasser. So, this is like a I mean, zoomed version of, of these units, this unit, okay, here this unit this is a zoomed version of it so inside we have the shell shaker degasser desilter or the desander okay and then the mud tank all right now what is mud what is drill mud okay so the drilling fluid commonly known as mud because it looks like uh, uh, mud okay uh, so uh, so it is a mixture of water, clay, and specific other materials and chemicals. Okay, the main purpose. What is the main purpose of this uh, drilling fluid? Just only to remove the cuttings and uh, lubricate the bit? No, there's some other purpose. Actually, uh, we have. We'll actually learn about this at the later slides. Okay, so the 
engineer who actually uh, monitor the physical and the chemical properties of the mud known as the mud engineer and what the mud engineers actually um, check the mud engineers they check the viscosity of the mud the density and the weight of the mud the filtration rate of the mud and the solid contents of the mud this is very very important why because the mud it creates a thin impermeable wall cake okay and that wall cake if you actually see this here it creates a wall cake so this helps of um, these dry wall cakes this helps of not collapsing down the the whole uh, drill hole okay this is uh, one of the function of the mud another function is actually it cools down the drill bit so when the drill bit actually rotates too fast then what's happened it became very warm very hard very very hard and when it becomes very hard then what's happened the drill bit can fail okay there is a maximum allowable temperature limit for the drill bit when it rotates now the mods it, it actually work as a cooling fluid okay so this is another purpose of the mud we actually use. Now, if the mud is too heavy, then what will happen? Then probably you cannot actually circulate the mud because it is really, really hard to circulate uh, something which is very, um, the density is very high. And if the mud is too light in density, then what will happen? Then it will not get enough uh, density to take these uh, small rock pieces to the surface okay so this is exactly why this is very important to um, to check the viscosity and the density and the filtration rate of the mud okay so this is very very important remember now this is about the um, mud circulation system uh, this is very important part please go through it more okay uh, now uh, let's talk about like the power system so the power system uh, it includes the engines and uh, uh, the mechanical drivers for the power transmission so what the power uh, systems actually do so the power system is the main um, uh, driving mechanism for running the different machines we have the mud pumps okay we have the rotary tables we have the drawers like in in the hoisting system the rotating system the mud pump system and all other like i mean small acs like air conditioning and running the i mean electrical equipment so all these actually run through a central ac power bus and how we actually do that by this generators or like the power system because in remote area you cannot actually use the the uh, electric system from the main power distribution line there is no power distribution line at the at the remote location so it depends on these uh, auxiliary power systems okay so this is more on that so the drill site preparation the drill site must have what the ample space at first okay it should comply with the law and it should have adequate water supply why because remember we got the uh, we got the uh, reservoir like this mud pit we need adequate water supply for the uh, for um, taking the density and the viscosity of the mud okay so this is very very important so at first we put a um, concrete pad support so that the machineries and everything remain stable otherwise what can happen due to the ground shaking the machineries could like uh, uh, get broken down okay so at first we need a steady and stable ground so that's that's why we make this uh, substructure at first okay then we actually put this uh, uh, make a small rat hole okay and then we put the pipe remember this uh, equipment so from here we actually make a bigger one a bigger like I mean big mouse hole okay and then 
we put um, a conductor hole, okay, um, and we put sorry we put the conductor pipe, okay, and once we put the conductor pipe, then we actually cement the conductor pipe, and then we start rigging, all right. So this is uh, just uh, go through all this, and then you can actually that so after we start rigging then we move the mud pumps moved into the place uh, the stairway is erected the power system everything we check is all right and start working on the start picking the hole okay so this is a, a picture like a graphical image how we actually make the hole okay so uh, please go through these uh, sites then you can have uh, if you go through these slides, then you can have a better idea, like, I mean, how uh, we do this uh, uh, line. So, um, remember one thing, once we actually start drilling, okay, after that, we put, uh, we put the casings, okay, and the casing is attached with the, with the colors, okay. Um, let me show you actually how these things done like uh, for instance oh, sorry for instance this is a drill hole okay you were actually drilling this hole this is the ground and here is the drill bit okay so drill bits are moving rotating and then you are actually um, circulating the amounts and everything like that. So what's happened during this process, since the drilling has been done, once you do um, a portion of the drilling, after that, what do we do? The next step is this. Okay, so this is the surface, this, this uh, drill hole, or like the bore hole. Okay. and then we put a casing okay um, let's give a different color for the casing for instance uh, this is a casing color okay so what's happened uh, here we actually um, we actually we just pause We actually put a casing in here okay why if we do not actually put the casing then this uh, this um, ground in here like this uh, rocks and mud this could actually choke and uh, this will actually give the pressure okay and the whole uh, reservoir could actually collapse okay that's why we actually put a casing so casing is a kind of like a big pipe a big thick diameter of a pipe that's what we call it like the initial pipe actually give we call the conductor casing okay and then we put another pipe um, so then we actually put another pipe so this is how the casing structure actually work now since I said like this casing is a big pipe okay then to stabilize it what we do we actually put lots of cements in here okay then we put the cements and then we actually give some time to this cement to this concrete is actually cementing we call it cementing we put this concrete and then when it solidifies after that it makes the stable ground and this casing actually uh, string with uh, with the casing okay so it uh, casing actually holds this uh, thing. So once we set up this, right after that we put the drill back again, and then we start drilling hole the next. Okay, and the next one. Oh, sorry. The next and the next one like that. Okay. So this is how actually it works. So. The casing is actually attached with the casing hanger, okay, and these are like the components of the 
uh, casing hangers. Now, as I said, like that, we need to do the cementing inside so that the whole formation, whole, whole, I mean, the borehole do not crash. So we actually put the portal cements, okay? So um, please uh, go through this slide. So you will actually know, like all I have explained is actually is in here, okay? And this is how this uh, surface casing and the cementing is done, right? So this is the, like the top view of the cement. So this is the casing, and then we put the cements, all right? So, uh, yeah, I was actually looking for this uh, um, uh, picture. So this is this casing, as I said. So the first casing we actually put is the conductor casing. That's the largest mm -hmm. diameter actually we got the conductor between the first one okay so once up we put the conductor casing so this is the conductor casing we put this one after that the second string of the casing we put the surface casing okay so it goes a little bit more deeper and then we put the cement back again and we give the intermediate casing and cement it again then we give the i mean repeat the same process and then the final one we give the production casing and then we do the cementing jobs, make this borehole more stabilized, and then we start drilling and getting the, we start producing the oil from the underground. If this casing fails, if the cementing job is not done properly, okay, then what happened? Then we can have a big accident that we call blowout, okay, why? Because Right under here, we the oil and gas uh, are in very high pressure. Okay, so probably you know about like the BP, uh, the Macando disaster um, at the Deepwater Horizon. Okay, the exact the same thing happened. Okay, there was a problem with the cementing issue, and then it started blow out. So this is very very important. So this is all about our second part of the lecture. Okay. Um, I will actually continue with the uh, third lecture, okay, um, please bear with me. So at this part, uh, we'll actually cover on some known chat, I mean known uh, topics like the, um, you remember the, um, sensors we send like the sound is and the sensors actually we send when the drills have been done so we'll actually talk about that like i mean what purpose we actually use that more application on that and i will actually talk a little bit more on the offshore drilling which is very similar but we actually use off some offshore uh, substructures so we'll actually talk about those uh, substructures so we, uh, the last uh, lecture we actually talk about like the casing so at first we put the conductor casing and then the surface casing we put in the place and do the cementing and stuff we put the intermediate casing and the finally we put the production casing and then we start doing the producing okay if the oil is a wildcat the formation must be evaluated to determine if the patient was reached if not it's a loss Drilling operations, so geology studies the cuttings through the rock drilling. Why geologists are interested on studying the rock cuttings? Because from this information, we'll actually get more idea, like what is actually, we, are we actually want to predict what is actually are under the depth. Like, uh, is it easy to drill more or it will take, I mean, it will be tough or uh, what is the possibilities or like the probabilities of getting the uh, oil underneath okay so these all are the uh, informations actually uh, we, uh, collect <clears throat> so how we can actually collect all these informations okay we actually collect the informations through the sensors and we call the wireline rock so remember the exploration um, chapter so exploration topic so this how we actually do that right so uh, when the well testing is done 
after that, uh, we send the uh, we send the uh, sensors like the uh, wire lines. Okay, so it's called MWD or measurement while drilling. So MWD uh, is a wireless and self-contained instruments which transmit mud pulse signals up to the hole through drilling fluid. Okay, so at the wirings we send the wires, but this one the MWD it may also used the during the drilling which is wireless. Okay, so it read the uh, the surface reads the data and it gives the information to the driller to bottom the borehole uh, without stopping the drilling so this is why this is a real-time data we actually get so this is very very important one okay so this is how actually it works it gives the there's a lots of sensors in here so we don't need to stop the drilling put the sensors back again and stop uh, it's not like that within this um, here we actually put all the sensors and real time it goes to the uh, to our server and then we get the data okay so what are of informations we actually collect through this uh, MWD or uh, measuring while drilling so we got the directional measurements uh, weight and torque of the bit the health monitoring of the drill bit okay which is very very important in, including like the vibration okay which is very important because uh, if it's more vibrates or and the annular pressure of course okay if if the um, uh, the VHA or the borehole annular it's more vibrates then what happened that it could fail okay so that's why these uh, informations actually give by the MWD also um, LWD which is the logging while the drilling it involves the measurements on the drill string to determine the volume and the type of hydrocarbon presence okay it often used along with the MWD right so what are the LWD measurements we know the wireline logging remember so the natural gamma ray resistivity density the neutron porosity which actually give like the hydrogen content okay that means like the presence of uh, hydrocarbons inside the velocity the magnetic resonance everything and the spectroscopy okay uh, to get the poor volume actually like uh, what is the uh, porosity so when you start drilling after we drill a little bit more then we actually seen like okay so the data seems weird I mean it's not showing anything that uh, there's the presence of uh, one gas so should we abandon it okay is it's a wildcat so should we actually abandon or we actually do that so this is the decision making process okay so if we get the signals and uh, everything is proper for instance like the uh, like the um, true porosity gives us better hydrogen content then we'll actually continue drilling and we'll do the complete okay so if we actually do that then what then we put the production casing home and cement the place and then we start producing the oil okay now let's talk about like the offshore drilling so this is all about the onshore drilling actually we talked about like i mean this is actually the general drilling process now the onshore and the offshore drilling the major difference is in case of offshore drilling um, we use some mega structures the, the, the offshore so this is important and some of these structures are mobile some are semi-mobile and some are fixed platforms okay so this is a little bit history about like the offshore drilling so the main types of uh, things uh, actually we use for the offshore rigs are either fixed or the mobile it depending on whether um, the, the feasibility of the water it depends on the water depth weather and and the, also I mean the uh, uh, estimation of uh, of uh, the oil and gas reserve in there right so these are the um, these are the factors to, to 
make the decision it should be mobile or the fixed now the mobile platform is also called modu okay so there are uh, different types of mobile platforms like uh, semi submersible or the checkups uh, so these actually um, are like the bottom supported rigs but we also can use the floating units for instance um, drill ships or like semi submersibles so semi submersible also can use as floating unit or even we can actually connect it to the uh, to the ground okay so these are the types now what is semi submersible it's a type of big barge and it's several types of semi submersible um, it can use in the shallow water to 30 feet or it can use like i mean i mean way more deeper okay so there's another different types of semi submersible who can actually work at the uh, which can be uh, used in uh, arctic uh, environments okay jack up this is another type of um, uh, popular modu okay um, this is a picture of the jack ups and you can i can actually watch the uh, how the jack up rig actually works um, inland barges um, there are these several types of inland barges can you use okay these are the types it is inland barges because um, uh, this actually works with the shallow water but in case of uh, deep water we actually use the drill ships okay so drill ships it can work uh, the water depth more than even 10,000 feet okay so this is how the drill ship actually looks like and works uh, semi submersible these are one of the most popular and the largest and also most expensive MODU, okay, it, um, it used like anchors to attach with the ground or you can use the dynamic positioning system, okay, to um, uh, stabilize on the, on, the, on the sea, okay, on the ocean. So this is a picture of the, of the uh, semi-submersible. Uh, so um this um uh, type so um here is a couple of pictures like how the drilling operations could be done okay so we can also use the rigid platform if the water depth is like less i mean the uh, uh is more like i mean greater than 10 feet and ten thousand feet sorry uh we can actually use the compilant platform too okay or the spar now, these are some examples of the rig platforms. So, here are all the types of, uh, of the uh, fixed platforms we use. The, the fixed platform, compiling tower, these are C-star types, the floating production system or like the uh, FPSO, the tension leg or like the spar, okay? These are the different types. Drilling operation, uh, controlled directional drilling, why it is needed because um, uh, sometimes at the offshore it's really um, tough like I mean to drill just in the one place for instance you already set up your uh, drilling in here but you start drilling the straight and you reach to the water level. But your geologist said like okay so since we reached here so probably if we go in another direction we can actually get the oil now would you actually abandon the post and make another drill in here no you can use this uh, this uh, technique which we call the directional drilling and you can actually do tilt the rigs and then you can actually produce you remember um, uh, the Iraq and Kuwait war so this is actually happened like this so what's happened uh, for instance this is the border of Iraq and Kuwait so what's happened this side is Iraq and this side is Kuwait so uh, Saddam Hussein from Iraq he actually blamed like Kuwait what they are doing they are actually using the directional drill to get the oil from Iraq okay so based on that uh, Iraq actually attacked uh, Kuwait and started the 
Gulf War in 1991. So um, this is about like the direction of drilling. So there's some factors we should actually consider before the direction of drilling is like the formations to be drilled, the mechanics or the bending the drill to the strings and the limits of the drilling tools we got to remember okay so this is actually gives us like the uh, at which fit how we'll actually bend the adaptation for like the longer radius like uh, we can actually bend it like two to eight degree per hundred feet for medium is the range for like the uh, for the short radius okay uh, so the directional drilling tools, we use the mud tools like the mud motors, uh, non-magnetic drill collars, um, uh, MWD sensors and the uh, rotary stable system. Okay. So this is how the uh, directional drilling actually works inside. Okay. Here is the uh, equipment of the directional drilling. All right. So this is the um, way how the directional drilling operations is actually done. So um, this is all about our uh, drilling operation classes. So we have learned about different drilling components and we have learned about the mud circulation system which is the very important part of our drilling process. And then we also learned like the uh, data analysis and data gathering and the data analysis of the drilling operations and a little bit about like the offshore platforms of the drilling system. So good luck everyone uh, and the next um, topic would be the production. So uh, we are following like I mean the same process like I mean the first is the exploration and then we do the drilling and then we do start doing the production okay so the next lectures will actually learn right after the drilling what we actually do I mean how we produce the oil and gas okay so all right take care everyone and uh, have a nice day bye